Um, we're going to do some factoring. We're going to do quite a lot of factoring, but we're going to use some let statements to help us out here. Um, so this question here, they want us to solve for x. Now, we could do distributive property, but I'll tell you what happens is as soon as you distribute, you end up with an x to the power of 4. And then we'll probably need to use some type of long division, um, synthetic division. We'll have to use the remainder theorem to see if we can figure out what a potential factor is. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It is a method of it. Um, but there's another method we could use um, specifically with this question here is we can see if we can't actually try to work out uh, a part of this and do um, some FOIL but with simpler values. So what is neat about this question is the first two terms in both sets of the brackets are the same. So we can set up a let statement. We're going to say a let, um, we'll say a in this case, equal x squared minus 5x. That changes this question. This question then becomes a minus 5 times a plus 3 is equal to 9. Now, this looks a lot more like a, a quadratic that we might solve. In fact, to set it equal to 0 will be the best route, so we'll have to move 9 over. But I'm going to use distributive property, and I'm going to move 9 all in that one move, okay? So we distribute the a's. We get a squared um, plus 3a minus 5a minus 15 minus 9 is equal to 0. I just moved that 9 over. I'm going to collect my like terms. We get a squared uh, minus 2a. This will become negative 24 is equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to factor this. So if we take a look, we're looking for factors here. I think 6, negative 6 and 4 will work. Um, remember, we're just going to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 24. And the same two numbers need to add to our middle term, which is negative 2 in this case. And I believe negative 6 and positive 4 fulfill that. Yeah, they do. Great. So we can go a minus 6 and a plus 4 is equal to 0. Awesome. Um, in fact, in this case, we can solve for a. We can say a minus 6 is equal to 0. We split it into two equations. And a uh, plus 4 is equal to 0. So we get a is equal to 6 and a is equal to negative 4. Great. We solve for a. The problem with that is... Um, a is actually another value here in this case. Um, a is x squared minus 5. So we're not done. We need to let A equal. So I'm going to rewrite the same statement because they're technically equality statements. And what this means is I'm going to start plugging everything back in to see what we get. So now we're going to replace A with this and see what we get. Uh, we end up with x squared minus 5x is equal to 6 as one equation. And we have x squared minus 5x is equal to negative 4. Yeah. So um, here again, you may recognize that you have two quadratic relationships again. We just have to set them each equal to 0. I'll move 6 in the one equation and negative 4 in the other. And we get x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And on the other one, we get x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So same concept again. we got to do some factoring. We have two sets of it, so we're going to get a lot of answers, which makes sense because this was a, when we distributed everything, it was an x to the power of 4, so it was a potential for four different answers here. Um, we need two values that are going to multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5 in this question, and then we need two values that multiply to positive 4, and those same two values need to add to negative 5 in this one. So one on the left here, um, I think we can use negative 6 and 1, and those will fulfill it. And in this one here, I think negative 1 and negative 4, there we go, should be our values. So when we go to factor this, we get x minus 6 and x plus 1 are equal to 0. And in the other one, we get x minus 1 and x minus 4 are equal to 0. Same as above, we split again, okay? And we're going to do it in both equations, so we're working with two at the same time here. x minus 6 is equal to 0, x plus 1 is equal to 0, x minus 1 is equal to 0, 
and x minus 4 is equal to 0. It's a lot going on. Well, we have four answers. We have um, x is equal to 6, x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to positive 1, and x is equal to positive 4. So you can write that all something like this. x is equal to plus or minus 1, 4, and 6. We can also rewrite the original function. We have it up here. Yeah. We can rewrite that whole function in function notation like this. f at x is equal to. And what we could actually do, okay, because remember we split it. We just put all of these um, sets of binomials together. We could say x minus 6, x plus 1 x minus 1 and x minus 4. That actually is the exact same as the value we wrote or we started with in this question. Okay, so 